I actually think it's good. It's, it, it might have a little bounce here, up. Most people have it, I mean, when I lived in London, we had a, this was a long time ago, but we had a saying, it's never too late to short the pound. Uh, and that was based on like a couple hundred years of history. But then it, it's had 20 years where it's, you know. Um, but currently, the Bank of England, in my opinion, has the most reasonable, smartest, best leader, a Canadian. <laughs> so, Carney is really, really good. And uh, he didn't, he lowered interest rates after the Brexit, but he could have lowered them further. He didn't panic. He said, let's see how it's going. It's, so far, it's, it's not going that badly for them. So I think the pound actually looks kind of good against the euro over the next six or nine months while they have their political uncertainty. So as a short term, I, I, I kind of like the pound. Uh, but that's, you know, that's one scenario. Uh, the other scenario is you get increasingly worried about Brexit, the triggering of Article 50, which, by the way, has to now go to Parliament uh, based on a court decision. Article 50 is the article in the EU treaty that starts the Brexit negotiations. Um, the Prime Minister, Theresa May, did not want to send that to Parliament because while the country voted to leave, if Parliament had voted, it would have voted 60-40 to stay. <laughs> so a lot of people simply that are in Parliament don't want to go on record <laughs> as being against their constituents. So it's a, and now, um, so you know, so there's some art. There's certainly some good arguments why the pound could continue to go down, but I, I think it it does look a little better for at least a month or two here. Uh, I, by the way, I don't give investment advice. We're not allowed to. Uh, so I just gave you two scenarios, pick one. <laughs> you know?